So this is the parts of speech lecture. All right, the parts of speech um, have to do with like things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. These are sort of the building blocks of the English, English language. You would have learned this in third or fourth grade and it wouldn't have meant a lot to you after that because you already knew what they were. But sometimes knowing the language that English teachers use is really helpful for students. And so this is just designed as sort of a refresher to things you have learned, just a quick reminder. So there are eight parts of speech. There's noun, verb, adjective, adverb, conjunction, preposition, article, and interjection. Most students are pretty familiar with noun, verb, adjective, and adverb, so I'm going to go through those pretty quickly and then explain conjunction, preposition, article, and interjection a little bit more slowly. All right, so nouns and verbs. So your noun is the person, place, or thing. All right, you might have thought of this as also as the subject. It's the thing that the person or the object is doing something. It's a girl corner book. Now, in the worlds of nouns, there's um, two other kinds of nouns. There's a proper noun, right, and that's like a specific girl, a specific corner, a specific book. So in this example, Cher is a specific woman. Denver is a specific place. All right, the Capitol building is a specific thing. All right, you wouldn't necessarily say every campus is capitalized, but if you were saying Missouri State University campus, then that would be capitalized. All right, there's also a pronoun. All right, and this refers back to your main noun. So your girl, your corner, your book. All right, now you wouldn't refer to a girl as an it, all right, because that's just rude, all right? Um, you know, she's a she. The corner is an it because it's got ni it's neither male nor female. All right. There's also I, which is referring to, to yourself. You, which is referring to someone else. He, she, and it all right, are other people. They is a group of people. We is a group of people, including yourself. Y'all, which is like not just some of y'all, but all y'all. All right. It's sort of the, the um, plural you. All right. And then a verb is the action of the sentence. It's also the beginning of the predicate, if you've learned it that way. All right, and so you have a girl, a corner, a book, which is doing something. The, the girl is running. The book is dancing in a Disney movie, obviously. Um, the corner is existing, so it is there to be. Adjectives and adverbs some, you know, are the things that modify your subjects or verbs. All right, so they're descriptors. Red, sharp, long, nails. So nail is your noun. Red describes it, sharp describes it, long describes it. All right, adverb modifies your verb. All right, so um, she danced. Well, how did she dance? Well, quickly, lightly, completely. She danced like she was, I don't even know, the most beautiful woman in the room, which is, a great predicate has got nothing to do with adverbs. Notice though with your adverbs that they end in ly. Now not all adverbs end in ly, but most adverbs end in ly. Now this is a rule that seems to be in, in flux right now. It's changing um, because I spend a lot of time watching TV and watching as the people on the TV say things like, yeah, well he went real quick. And I'm shouting at the TV, it's quickly. He went quickly, and I don't know why this is changing, and when I'm in charge of the world, things will be different, but in the meantime, when you are writing, you want to be more formal, and so therefore use the quickly, lightly, completely, use your LYs. All right, conjunctions. So these are things that hook together um, different ideas, and right, there's two kinds of, of conjunctions. All right, so there's coordinating conjunctions. Now, there's only seven of these. So if you memorize these seven, you don't have to memorize the subordinating conjunctions. All right, and so these are and, or, nor, for, but, or, yet, so. And yet. Did I say that? I don't know. All right, so here in our example, we have the ball bounced into the street. So the ball bounced into the street. That is a full sentence right there. The little girl followed it also a full sentence right there. All right, and and here is hooking together this sentence and that sentence. 
All right, and it's doing it with a comma. Now, subordinating conjunctions um, show relationship in terms of one is more important than the other. So those are things like since, because, while, as, if, which, when. There's, there's a lot of these. So you want to sort of have a list. I think about them as Wabasu. So, you know, if you think of it as each of these words remind, you know, are a mnemonic. So when or while would work for Wabasu, or for the W's. A is for as, B is because, I is for if, S is for since, and U is for unless. All right, so in this case, the ball bounced into the street while the little girl followed. All right, so the little girl follows a full sentence, the ball bounced into the streets a full sentence while it's hooking them together. Notice that it doesn't have a comma. All right, that's because subordinating conjunctions are a little bit stronger than coordinating conjunctions, and therefore no comma is necessary. Prepositions articles. All right, preposition tells directions. So if you have a kid at home who watches Sesame Street, Sesame Street does a lot of work with prepositions. So these are things like up, next to, behind, on, against, above, below, around. All right, these just tell directions. All right, and Sesame Street does a really good grounding of that if you want to watch it. Articles are your things that say a, an, or the. All right, and they, and they signify general or specific. So A is one of many, but it is general. So a book at a library, a, you know, um, a poster at the shop, a chair in the room. All right, it doesn't matter which chair in the room, just one of them. All right, and is one of many. It's still general, but it has the N because it sounds weird to say a apple, so it's an apple. So a, the next word starts with a vowel or sounds like a vowel, all right, like an honest man sounds like with an, it sounds with an, with an O, even though honest is spelled with an H, all right. Then it would say an apple a day. And again, it's not a specific apple, it's just any of the apples. The is specific, all right, so the Granny Smith apple. And it's, you know, there's a bunch of apples there, and which one do you want? I want the Granny Smith apple. Um, and you want to use that if it is, if it's specific, if it's the only one. And lastly, interjections. An interjection is a transition term. Usually it comes at the beginning of the sentence. So, however, comma, or ow. All right. There's actually a really great bit about all of these on um, Schoolhouse Rock, which once again is available on YouTube. Sometimes it's on YouTube, sometimes it's not. I encourage you strongly to go and watch the Schoolhouse Rock on parts of speech because they're fun and they help you remember things. And lastly, practice this. So here's your sentence. Interestingly, the pretty girl danced quickly up the steps of the Capitol building and she met Cher, who was reading a long book against the pillar. All right, your job here is to identify what part of speech each word here is. And good luck.